Ruchim Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. We are now again in the middle of our uh, lecture series on gematrias, on numerical values of letters. And we're up to the gematria of the letter Nun, again, which has a numerical value of 50. Now, the letter Nun is the 14th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and it has a gematria, a numerical value of 50. The letter Nun appears in two forms, the bent Nun, used at the, at the beginning of the middle of a uh, word, and the elongated uh, nun, used only at the end of a word. The rokeach sees in the two forms of the nun a description of the heavenly court. The bent nun symbolizes God sitting on his throne, while the elongated nun represents the angels, uh, the, pardon me, the angel standing before him. The nun stands for namon, the reliable and faithful one. And the long form of the letter denotes continuity. Now the redemption of the children of Israel from the Egyptian slavery is mentioned 50 times in the Torah. The 50 references to the Exodus correspond to the 50 weeks in a lunar year and the 50 Shabbosim in every year. In addition, the redemption process, which started on the first day of Pesach, reached its completion 50 days later on Har Sinai, on top of Mount Sinai, with the giving of the Torah and the festival of Shavuot, uh, again, which the uh, weeks, which we call Shavuot. Uh, this is symbolized in the 50-day ripening period of an apple, which occurs in Sivan, the month when the Torah was given. Uh, again, one of the reasons why we have the charosas made with apples at our Seder. The journey from one festival to another is alluded to by the 50-day count of the Omer. The obligations of a Jewish marriage arrangement are, are recorded in what's called a ksuba, a document. The set monetary settlement allo allocated to a virgin was 50 silver shekels, which is equal to 200 zuz or dinar in Mishnayah currency. This all connects to the festival of Shavuot, which is called the marriage between God and the Jewish people. The Rokeach states that the singular form of the word Torah can be found 50 times in the five books of the Chumash. The moon is 50 times smaller than the earth, and 50 years of marriage is called a golden wedding anniversary. The site of the temple was purchased from Aronaha Yabusi for 600 shekel, and, and Dabramal collected 50 shekel from each tribe so that each one would have an equal share in the holy site. At the end of the book of Yov of Job, God confronts Job with 50 questions into the nature of creation. These 50 questions into the mysteries of nature correspond to the 50 gates of understanding at the level of worlds. The maximum age for a Levite to serve in the temple was 50 years old. In Pirkei Avot 5.22 it states, Ben Chamishim li At the age of 50, one has the ability to give advice. There, are 50 gold, there were 50 golden hooks on the roof spread directly above the curtain cover at the entrance of the Holy of Holies in the uh, Mishkan. The Talmud in Rosh Hashanah 21b states that God created the universe with Nun Share Bina, the 50 gates of understanding. The 50 days of the Omer parallel the 50 gates of understanding. Now the highest level that a human being can reach is the 49th level. It is God Almighty alone who enables a person to make that final leap from the 49th to the 50th. The Gemara in Erevin states, 57b, that a rope measuring 50 cubits was used to ascertain distance for measuring things such as the Tuchum on Shabbat, the distance between the city one may travel on Shabbat outside the city. The same technique was used when a dead body was found in the wilderness between two cities to ascertain which of the two cities' elders would come have to perform the ritual. It was called the Egla Arufa, the breaking the neck of the calf. Now, because of the negative impact of a granary, leather, tannery, and cemetery, these were not halakhically permitted to be located within 50 cubits of a city. If one were to count the eight journeys backwards that the tribe of Binyamin took, there would be a total of 50 journeys of the children in Israel in the desert during the 40 years that they were there. 
the Oval Year, the 50th year of the seventh Shemitah cycles, is when the shofar is blown. All hereditary lands are returned to their original owners, and all Jewish slaves are then freed. It is referred to as Shabbat, Shabbaton, that the Sabbath of Sabbaths. This description is shared with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. On this day, Moshe, Moses, our teacher, came down from the mountain for the third time with the second set of tablets. He told the nation then that God had forgiven them for the sin of the eagle of the golden calf. Uh, there are also 50 days of tshuva, of repentance, starting from Rosh Chodesh Elul until the end of Hosh Rabbah. Now the high priest wore an apron-like garment that was called an aphod. It had a two, two attached shoulder pieces at the corners. Attached to these shoulder pieces were Avne Shoham, Shoham stones, placed in gold settings. On each of these stones were engraved the names of six of the tribes of Israel, and there are 25 letters on each of the stones, equal 50. Now God did not allow Moshe Rabbeinu to cross the Yardane, the Jordan River, neither dead nor alive. The Jordan was 50 cubits wide. Haman, and the story of Purim, constructed a gallows that was 50 cubits high, upon which he wanted to hang Mordechai on. Poetic justice, he and his 10 sons were hung on that same gallows instead. In Psalm 145, which we loosely refer to as the Ashrei, King David begins each of the verses with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It begins with an aleph, first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and finishes with a tuf, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The only letter that is omitted is the nun, and the question is why. The reason given is that the letter nun alludes to nefilah, a downfall, as expressed by the prophet Amos in 5.2 in the verse, the maiden of Israel is fallen, she shall rise no more. However, King David continues the alphabetic order with the words, somech, Hashem l'chol hanoflim, that God supports all of the fallen. This verse then implies that the kingdom of Israel will not rise by itself, but it will be raised through the help of God Almighty, based on the Gemara and Barachot. The Bnei Yisachor states that the children of Israel were redeemed in the month of Nisan, which has two nuns, one in the beginning and one at the end, with a samach in the middle. The nun at the beginning alludes to the suffering that the children of Israel experienced in Egypt, and the samach in the middle is an allusion to their redemption. Then the nun at the end is an allusion to the fact that they would sin again and be sent into exile. In the middle of the portion of Baal Losecha, chapter 10, verses 35 and 36, we find two upside-down nuns, something not found anywhere else in the Torah. Rabbi Huda Nasi explains that these two verses are so significant that they deserve to be taken out from their context and appear in the Torah as an independent book, two verses, creating not five books of the Torah, but seven books of the Torah. Our rabbis tell us that the letter Nun denotes misfortune and misery because it represents, as we mentioned before, nefilah, falling. And the way to turn such misfortune and disaster into happiness and good tidings is by turning the letter upside down. Thus, when the Torah recounts two calamities, calamitous episodes in the history of the nation of Israel, we find they are separated with the interval of the Holy Ark with the two upside-down nuns. These two upside-down nuns are there to indicate that through the power of the Torah, which is placed in the Ark, all of our calamities can be turned into good fortune. Now, there are many reasons given for the two inverted nuns. The children of Israel will have to enter will have to have entered the land of Canaan in only three marches. But because they sinned, they turned around, inverted, so to speak, the, the journey. And this portion really belongs fifty chapters earlier, in chapter two, verses seventeen, when it speaks of the order of their travels in the wilderness. The spelling of the word nun is nun vav nun, which is an acronym for the words naase venishma which mean we will do and we will listen. The inverted nuns symbolized that now their condition was reversed as to when they said these words to God when he offered them the Torah. 
basin of Shalom Chavav. This is the reverse of what God wants for us, based in the Taleoros. Now, the word nace, miracle, spelled nun samach, alludes to the fact that though things may start off as a negative, the fila, falling, the end will be positive, samach, miraculous help and support from God Almighty. What we call a yerida for an aliyah, a descent for a greater ascent. Now, the word nun in Aramaic means fish. The survival of fish are many times dependent on their ability to go against the current. So too with the Jew. In order for us to survive in this world, we must be able and willing to go against the tide of the secular world. Many Sephardim eat salmon on Shabbat as an allusion to this idea, since no fish swims against the current more than salmon. Some sources compare Moshe to a fish, a nun, because he was taken out of the water by Paro's daughter. Also, Yehoshua is called Ben Nun, the son, the disciple of this great fish. In addition, Moshe was born in the month of Ador, which corresponds to the sign of the zodiac of Pisces, again, which is a fish. In Tehillim, chapter 50, verse 23, it states, in reference to the thanksgiving offering, Zoveach toda yechabdeni, he who offers a thanksgiving offering honors me. And the word yechabdeni is spelled with an extra nun. The question is why. Our rabbis teach us this alludes to the fact that we must give honor and gratitude twice to God. The Ksav Sofer says that he thanks God first for saving him from danger, and then secondly, for putting him in a situation which gives the person the ability to reach out to God with prayer and repentance. As we know, there's no atheist in a foxhole. The Nun, again, as I mentioned before, is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is a numerical value of the name David, the progenitor of the Messiah. The gematria of the word nun is 756, 7, 5, and 6 is the, if we add them together, is 18, which is the gematria of the word chai, which is life. May God bless us with the ability and the strength to overcome the tide of godliness in this world so that we can attain true life and help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sikenu twick quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless. Be well. Shabbat Shalom.